Welcome to Live on Purpose Radio with Dr. Paul Jenkins, where you will hear inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Feed your mind with a regular dose of positive energy and show up for your life every day on purpose. Living on purpose means that you have a purpose and you do it intentionally. And now, here's your host, Dr. Paul. Hello and welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul Jenkins. We're promoting pathological positivity today here at Live on Purpose Radio. And I've asked a new friend of mine to join us. She's coming from the deep south. This is Kelly Swanson. Say hello, Kelly. Hey, Paul. Nice to be here. I am so glad that you're joining me today. People will find out very quickly from your accent that you are indeed from the South. Is that right? That's right. I'm originally from Georgia, and now I live in North Carolina. Well, they both count. They both count. (laughs) You are a motivational speaker and a comedian, which means... Which means that I tell you you can do anything, and then I tell you I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm working on a new book called And You Thought Today Was Bad. (laughs) And You Thought Today Was Bad. That's going to contain some of your fun stories, too. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Excellent. Kelly, here at Live on Purpose Radio, we're all about illuminating the principles that allow people and empower them to live their life on purpose. And I'm thinking you might have some ideas about that. Well, first of all, I just love that line, living your life on purpose. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know um, about the rest of you or the people listening, and I'm not an expert. I'm just somebody figuring it out as I go. But for that, a a majority of my life, and still in some areas of my life, I didn't live it on purpose. I, um, I just reacted to what life gave me. In terms of fairy tales, I talk a lot about fairy tales. Um, I acted as if I was the reader of my fairy tale. And the um, Mm. enlightenment came when I realized I wasn't the reader of this fairy tale, I'm the author. You're the author of it. Yeah, and sure, I can't control everything that comes my way, that is for sure. And I don't have, you know, the ultimate control over everything that goes on in the world, but it's up to me. Uh, Life isn't about what happens to you, it's about the story that you write with what happens to you. Right. Right. And things happen to us on a daily basis, that then we get to decide, hmm, what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And will I let this make me, or will I let this break me? And it's not always so easy, you know, as these cute little phrases, but it still is true. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. So do you have some examples pop into your head about how this plays out? What, you mean living on purpose? Yeah, well, like difficult people. You know, I, I speak to so many audiences, and they come up, and you know, I always, always ask people, where are you stuck? Where, where are you stuck in your life? Um, mm-hmm. What's keeping you from getting the life you want? And it's amazing to me how many people are stuck because of somebody else. Mm. Um, and and I don't, I'm, I'm not meaning that they're weak in this. It's very normal. But I'm stuck because of this boss, or I'm right. stuck because of the man I got, or the man I didn't get or this mother-in-law, and their whole issue revolves around somebody else. When um, what I've learned in my life is we can't control people, and, and the, the, the main thing we have to do is to bring it back to ourselves because we're the only thing that we can control in every situation. And I have to constantly remind myself of this because I just want to fix people and I want to blame people and I want to say it's all their fault. And I have to say, you know, um, I need to step back and, and it, instead of trying to change them, change my reaction to what they're doing. Does that make sense? I mean, Ch- I mean, you're the expert here. Changing your own reaction. And yes, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I see the same thing. I see that this is where we get stuck when we start to identify something outside of ourselves that is responsible for whatever misery we're feeling. 
right, right. My, I, I remember telling my husband, I was like, my son's driving me crazy. He's eight years old. And, and oh. I was like, he won't pick up his toys. And, you know, and, and I keep telling them a hundred times a day, pick up his toys, pick up his toys. I'm just yelling it over and over and over. And even my mm-hmm. husband finally said, well, why don't you try something different? I was like, whoa, 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 changed my reaction to this problem. Uh-huh. So, so it is easier said than done. We, sometimes it just is a matter of stopping and thinking about it. Well, yeah, we get into habits, mm-hmm. habits of thinking, and it actually, there's some neuroscience behind this. It's, it, it's referred to as neural pathways, where we create these habits, cruise control, autopilot, and we roll with whatever it is that we've practiced, whether or not it's effective. And to change that can be a little challenging. It is. I'm going through that with my health. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, created, I created a bunch of habits and never even realized it. I'm going along. I mean, hey, I'm plus size. I think I look great. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to exercise. I only run if somebody's chasing me. And, you know, I just, I was raised on lard. Um, yeah. um, and so I, I got to a point where I, um, well, actually, if you don't take care of your health, it eventually taps you on the shoulder. And that's what it did with me. And there was a situation that came up and I said, you know, whoa. And I had to take a step back and say, wait a minute, Kelly, what are, what are the habits here that you've created? And I had to go, you know, re- look at the food that I'm eating and the steps that I'm taking in the, the am I exercising and thinking, well, you know, if you keep on this path, mm-hmm. this is where you're going to be 10 years from now. And while you feel great today, you may not feel great then. And it was very hard for me, Paul, because I yeah. hate exercise. I mean, I'm lazy and I, I, it's hard to break those habits, especially when you don't really want it bad enough. And mm. so that's what I'm trying to teach myself how to do is how to want this bad enough, how to connect it to something I really do want. Right. Um, and, and, yeah, it is not easy to change a habit, it, but it can be done. And then, then once you get through that, whatever, 21 days it is to break a habit. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what? You and I are in the same business. And you might think, wait a minute, I'm not a professional psychologist. <laughs> But we're both in the business of assisting people to change and to improve their lives. Yes, yes. And, even, and also to love themselves at the same time. Right. I speak at a lot of women's health events, which is, it just is hilarious to me that I would be the poster child for women's health, these women's health events. <laughs> but they don't bring me in because I'm Speaker Barbie. You know, they bring me in because I'm where they are. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and that... Um, I represent who they are at that stage, and my approach is not to shame them or, or, or you know, I want you to love who you are at any stage because I believe yeah. when you do love yourself for who you are, then you're going to make better choices than if you were to shame yourself. Shaming me doesn't do any good. I'm going to head right back for that bag of chips. Right. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, and when you give people, as a speaker, I used to think I needed to be perfect. You need to have the St. John suit, which is horrible. It makes my rear end look like two pigs fighting under a blanket. You need to wear the pantyhose. You need all these rules. And I finally realized, Paul, and, and I bet you've realized it in a, in a different sense, but as a mm. performer, I finally realized that getting in front of people and being perfect yeah. did, did nothing to connect with them. That if you want to instigate change, uh, um, I was far better served getting up in front of them and taking off the face. Right. And saying, look, I'm not perfect either. And, yeah, I draw on my eyebrows, and the other day I drew one an inch higher than the other and had to walk around all day looking suspicious. <laughs> 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 you know, and there's something freeing. It's the, you know, I would love to know the psychology behind it, but there's something very freeing in coming in front of a group of people and saying, hey, my name's Kelly, I'm a size 14 on a good day. You know, and, yeah. and, they're, and they applaud so um, I found that helping each other change starts with getting honest with each other and realizing that nobody has it all together. There is no print, you know, nobody really leads the charmed life, and yet we look around and think everybody's got it together but us. Right. But we're all different shades of crazy. Yes, we are. Except maybe you, Paul. <laughs> Some are more crazy than others, right? <laughs> right. You know what, Kelly? I was just looking at your Facebook page today, and... Uh, do you want to tell tell the listeners what happened over at Walmart today? <laughs> tell somebody. I posted on Facebook. I said, just in case you're thinking too highly of me, I just got back from Walmart, and what did I say? In my flip-flops and a dress that was worn backwards and showing my bra straps with a 
healthy portion of back fat showing. Right. <laughs> and don't ask me, Paul, what possesses me to put some, some of that stuff on Facebook. But, I mean, look how many comments and likes it got. Yeah, and you it's know, just I, what you said. Yeah. It's just what you said just now because being genuine and authentic really resonates with people. Yeah, yeah, it, it really does. And I'm sitting here thinking, great, I write all these articles about deep things and aspirations, and nobody likes those. But right. <laughs> you go, you go, uh, you post something about back fat, and everybody's, you know, yeah. and humor is too is is a big tool yes. for me. Um, making people laugh as long as it's the good kind, you know, as long as it's not hurting them. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I don't know. It just opens people up. And and I don't know. Everything's better if you can laugh your way through it. Absolutely. And and to laugh at yourself a little bit in the oh, process. Oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot. It's okay. Kelly, it's that's, okay. What I, that's what I think you're doing for people, giving them permission to do that. Right. Because you're willing to do that. Right. And, 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 and I think in a way it says... You know, I, I, that's, that's, I mean, I, I bear that in every aspect of my life. I get up and say, hey, I'm not the perfect mom. My kid's been afraid of the dark ever since I mixed up his lawn, my law and order videos with his Veggie Tale videos. Oh, boy. You know, he, the other day he asked me what hell was like, and I told him Walmart. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> um, it, 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 talking about marriage, I mean, you pick an aspect of my life, and I'm just sort of bearing, you know, how unperfect I am. But you're right. And, and, and yet it, it, it ends with this message of, and look, here I am. It didn't stop me. No, I don't look like what the world's package, or no, I may not have, have reached what the world's success is. I'm who I am, and I'm still loving life and reaching my dreams. And that reaches right out and grabs them, Paul. It just says, it and does. you can too. And, and it's, it just, it, it's amazing. To, I didn't realize how many people, especially women, suffered from this, this sense of comparison and judgment, and I need to fit in with the rest of the cool girls, and to be given permission and acceptance and validation for who you are, and you don't mm-hmm. age out of it, and you don't size out of it, and you, you are as smart as you need to be, and I don't know, it's just, it's an awesome thing to watch people really fly after they let go of all that baggage. Right. And as you're, as you're going around sharing this message with people, you've, you've honed it down to a few basic principles. Is this true? This is true. This is true. Three. And, um, well, it's kind of four, but um, um, four is, isn't really the, the, a principle per se. And, and there may be more. I reserve the right to add more as I go. But these are <laughs> the things I figure when I, when I get stuck. And it's very basic but uh-huh. it's simple, but so am I. Uh, my message isn't fancy, and, and it's three words. It's see, believe, and do. And uh, do you want me to explain them? See, believe, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and do. Yes, and walk do. us through that. Um, and I'll just, I'll just give it to you in a nutshell for each one. Mm-hmm. See involves seeing what, the, what you want. Um, without a vision, the people will perish. Where is it that you want to go? See the life that you want. And that sounds easy, but many of us have never really defined what it is we want. Um, I think maybe if we did define the marriage we want, we wouldn't have gone into a different kind of marriage, if that makes sense. Um, um, I believe in writing down your goals. I believe in putting things to paper and visualizing it and speaking it. And I had to do that with my health. Okay, what does this look like? What is a healthy lifestyle going to look like for me? So it, the first step, I mean, you can't go after what you want unless you know what it is. So see what you want. Mm-hmm. See where you're stuck. See what is blocking your path. Um, and, again, it has to be brought back to you because if it's somebody else, we can't control them. Um, so bring it back to yourself. See what's blocking your path. Um, um, and I, there are a few other components of see. See your path, not yeah. your neighbor's or not mine uh-huh. or not your mother's or the women on TV, or, you know, see your path. And, I, and part of that is also about dreaming big. Um, don't limit yourself. Um, when, for as long as I dreamed for just enough, just enough was all I ever got. So I finally decided, well, I'm just going to dream bigger then. And then I always hit just enough. And the right. second one is believe. Um, for me, 
um, in, for my career, for example, as a motivational speaker and a comedian, getting up on a stage in front of people is a very scary thing. Following this dream and not knowing what to do, it's, it's, it's frightening still to this day. Mm. And I, I knew what I wanted, but I secretly didn't believe I could get there. I believed the lies that, that women don't do this or that I wasn't smart right. enough or not good enough. Whatever lie we feed our heads um, that, that might just not be the truth. And I had to learn to take it and assess it and go, wait a minute, I'm carrying around information um, that I may have picked up on the playground as a kid, being that kid you threw things at on the bus. And oh, yeah. You know, this is no longer true. Um, and, and I love to, to remind people and, and to look at my audience and say, I need you to believe in you, that you're braver than you think you are, that you're stronger than you think you are, that you're smarter than you may have ever been told and more valued than you will ever know. Um, and I need yes. you to believe it even on the days that you don't. You're going to have to fake it until you make it. It's a process. I didn't wake mm-hmm. up overnight and go, okay, good, I believe it now. I mean, I had to become aware of it and, and practice it, and I still fight it. I had to put sticky notes up. Um, I, I have to, uh, one lady said, before you go to sleep, um, feel your think good things about yourself, and so uh, even that little simple thing. Now I lay me down to sleep. My last thought. Oh yeah. So, you know what, Kelly? You're uh, right on track here with some things that I think are are very very powerful. When we come back from this break, I want to talk about a courageous truth. Is that okay? Sounds good. We'll be right back. This is Kirk Weasler to tell you about MoreBetterBooks.com. MoreBetterBooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on MoreBetterBooks.com. You'll want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best smelling book could change your life forever. It certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format fully illustrated with very fun hidden messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great, these titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. The number one barrier to success and happiness is fear. Anxiety paralyzes and keeps you from taking the steps that lead to success, achievement, happiness, or better relationships. All forms of anxiety have two primary components, a brain component and a mind component. Your brain is an organ in your body. Your mind does the thinking. The answer to your anxiety is understanding what the brain is doing and steering your mind in a different direction. Understanding and applying a few basic principles in both of these areas makes an immediate and lasting difference in my clients breaking free from anxiety and moving forward with power in their lives. Before I started learning the correct principles to overcome anxiety with Dr. Paul, I wasn't progressing in many areas of my life and it inhibited my thinking. But after I started applying these principles in my life, um, I felt more free. I could progress in those different areas and I just felt all around better. The best thing about the help that we got from Dr. Paul was that it was not just a band aid to fix my son's anxiety problems, but he empowered my son to be able to help himself whenever the problems arise again. Now is the time to overcome anxiety, worry, and fear. Your tools to do this are now available in a four-part video course that you can do in the comfort and privacy of your own home. Get immediate access to this powerful program at MyAnxietyAnswer.com. The first episode is free. Visit MyAnxietyAnswer.com today. To be what we are and to become what we are capable of becoming is the only end of life. Robert Louis Stevenson. So, Kelly, before the break, I mentioned that I want to talk about a courageous truth because what you're 
What you're suggesting here, see and believe, come together in a powerful way when we realize that there is a courageous truth that's waiting for us. And by that I mean we can set our goals on either end of a spectrum. And at one end of the spectrum is sell out. Where it's not going to push you, it's not going to stretch you at all. And the other end of that spectrum is hype. This isn't going to happen. Somewhere in between those two, and maybe transcending them both, is a courageous truth that is more than you think you can do, but less than you fear. That courageous truth will stretch you, and it will move you, and it is totally doable. But that belief has to be bolstered. That was the thought that I had as you were talking about seeing and believing. Very eloquently said, much better than I can say it. But, um, yeah, and I get a lot of phone calls and emails about fear. I I got one last night from a a guy in California, wanted to be a speaker, and he said, I've just known all my life I'm supposed to be a motivational speaker. And he said, and I am absolutely paralyzed by fear. And he said he was flipping through the website, found me, stranger, and saw the phone number and just had this voice that said, call. And I'm so glad he called. Yeah. Um, you, so there are other people are, met, are sent to help us on this. Um, um, and and uh, one, another thing about fear, too, is people always ask me, how are you not afraid? I'm like, are you kidding? I'm afraid all the time. You, there, you know, are there, there are new challenges. Um, it doesn't go away. I've just learned how to own it, how to embrace it. The more I take those tiny steps outside my comfort zone and I see that the world doesn't fall apart or that even though I fell the world didn't end and I got back up um, I said those people out there and somebody said it much better but something to the effect of those people taking that jump it's not that they're not afraid it's that they're jumping anyway um, my dream is bigger than my fear mm-hmm. and, and you're right I do jump Just I pick that place between and you said it so much better, but complacently or staying exactly where I am yeah. and, you know, too far. <laughs> right. Um, and, and other people, it's important. It really is important to to find somebody to help you through this, to do this, to be, I mean, whether it's a friend or whether it's you or whether it's a motivational speaker, um, you know, there's there's great. I really do believe something really neat happened when that guy called me out of the blue last night. I really do believe he's got the courage. Just because somebody right. told him he did, he could. That's he right. Yeah. That, and that's, that's bolstering the belief that, yes, I can do this, because here's another person who's really pretty normal, and this person's doing it. Right, right. And what you feed your mind, I know you know this, but is really powerful. And, and I've had to really deal with that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And negative thoughts still creep in all the time. And I have to be aware and go, no, stop thinking like that. Don't think in terms of why didn't I, – I, I was thinking the other day, why, sometimes I get jealous. Why didn't I get <laughs> this opportunity? Why did that person get that opportunity and I didn't? I want that, you know, wanting what right. they have. And I had to change that and go, no, take that out. No, this is their turn. This is their day. And there's not a finite – amount of opportunity out there in this world. There is an infinite amount of opportunity. It is endless. So little things like that of just becoming aware. I used to have a friend that would say, every time I'd say something negative, she'd go, cancel, cancel, cancel. And Paul, I make that Uh on her. It got on my nerves so bad I wanted to smack her. But, you know, now I find myself doing that. And And so what you feed into your, the things you say to yourself, are very powerful. And I do think if you say you can't do it, you won't. Yeah, you're right. That's right. I can't is a dead end. Mm -hmm. You think about what's the next step after I can't. Mm -hmm. There isn't one. Right. Telling yourself that you can, and even if you don't know how, because notice, you don't have to know everything Probably somebody out there knows more than you do about whatever it is you don't know. Right. And 
who's willing to help. I went on a women's yeah. retreat, and a, a lady told me at the end of the retreat, we were on the beach, it was, it was at the beach, and she said, I'm 60 years old. She said, my husband's gone. I don't know if he passed or left, or I don't know, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, she said, my kids are grown. She said, I've got enough money to, to live. I don't need to, to work. And she said, I just don't know what to do with the rest of my life. Mm. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And she looked around, Paul, make sure nobody was listening. And she whispered, I want to be a mom. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you mean a mom like, you know, standing on the street with the yeah, white face stuck and the in gloves a box. <laughs> Yeah. And, I, and, and, and she said, yeah. And um, really? she said, I want to be a mom. I said, well, okay, go be a mom. She said, I don't know how. I said, well, as, as it happens, I know some. I said, I'll bring one down. We'll see if she'll teach a class. I'll <laughs> you, take it with you. You happen to know some mimes, of course. I do. Of course sure. I know mimes. That was a story. Why doesn't this surprise me about you, Kelly? I, I know jugglers and magicians. But, but, but so I said, well, we'll get one to teach it. And she said, well, my kids will laugh. I said, so? She said, well, what if I'm not any good? I said, you might not be. She mm-hmm. said, well, how will I get business? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, do it anyway. Right. And, and it, so we just kept busting through each one of those. She's like, what if I'm, you know, what if I don't succeed? Then you don't succeed. Try something else. Right. I said, you, I said, you go home, you call me on Monday, and we'll get a mom down here. We'll arrange it, and we'll take a class, and, and, and that's all we'll do. And then you can figure out the next step from there. And unfortunately, Paul, she never called. But I like mm. to think that maybe she followed a, a different dream. But it's, you know, just so what? So what if you end up not being? And I do that a lot. When I'm scared about something, and I know it goes against visualizing success, but sometimes when I'm really freaked out mm-hmm. about some show, and, and I remember I did this with Loretta Lynn. I got to open for Loretta Lynn. No and I was born a coal miner, daughter, remember her? Yeah. And I, I just freaky, and, and I started getting in my head, and I can't do this, and I'm going to hyperventilate, and what if, this, what, you know, what if I, and, and I just said, well, what if? What if you get out there and you can't remember a word? Then you'll walk off. What mm-hmm. if it's horrible and they don't laugh? Then they don't laugh. What if people all go tell everybody and the whole world thinks you're awful and say you're never going to get another job anywhere again because you're horrible at this? Mm-hmm. Well, and I thought, and I was like, okay. And I know that's exaggerating, but I like to play that what if. And then I think, and well, okay. Just answer the what ifs. Yeah, what exactly. if? And it, it's, you know, a friend of mine was going through much bigger problems and, you know, what was going to lose her house, was probably going to lose everything she had, you know, and we walked through that. What Mm -hmm. if I end up in a shelter? Well, then I'll come bring you food. You know, or what if, you know, we just kept, you know, I think sometimes when you see the result, and not always, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm I'm not an expert. This is just what I do in my own life, that you face it and go, okay, I can handle that and jump in. Absolutely. And notice that you've already handled everything so far. Which is well. a big mind blower to some people, you know. Yeah. yeah. But you really have, and why would that ever change? Well, it won't. Yeah. Whatever comes, you're going to handle, and you, you'll find some way. There are resources. There, there's always another step when you say, "I can." And and great power in the moment, and great exactly. strength in today. A lot of times, we, me, um, I especially, will worry about what hasn't happened will worry about something in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really do believe, don't look back, that's not where we're going, that, that, that you're going to go in the direction that you look. So don't look backwards, don't look around, and, there's, and just focus on today. Because I think we have a lot of power when we just focus on right now. And mm-hmm. What is it that we need to do today? And then focus on tomorrow when it comes. A little note about fear, and then I want to to hear what you have to say about that third principle. Okay. Okay. Fear, when when we talked earlier about a courageous truth, okay, you're setting your goal. Your courage implies fear. Is this true? Yes. You can't have courage unless you're afraid. Yeah. If you're not afraid, then well, courage is irrelevant now. Yeah. So. So moving forward with courage, yeah, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you, it's, it's going into an area you don't know. And anything people fight change so much, I think, because they don't know what it's going to look like. 
and yet every dra- I always say f- look at change not as a bad thing but mm-hmm. as the magic carpet to take you to to where you want to go to to that right. dream and yet fear's got to be a part of it. Well, better is always different. Yeah. That doesn't mean difference always better. That's it doesn't right. go both right. ways. Right. But that's what has people being afraid of it. But better is always different. And you can't change your life unless you're willing to change. Yeah, right. You can't move forward. You can't get that life you want. You can't move out. And I know that sounds basic, but, you know, one time I was on a vision casting committee of a church, and we formed this wonderful vision of where it was we wanted to go, and it was great. Awesome. And it looked good. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, nobody wanted to change. Right. And it it never left the ground because nobody was willing. They still wanted to do what they'd been doing 50 years ago. And you just can't do that. Mm. So move us into this third principle. We have just a few minutes left. Okay. Well, the third one is simple. It's do. Do. Um, yeah, it's simple, not easy. But without a, what is it my trainer always says? A failure to plan is a plan to fail. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we get through the see and the believe, or I say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to change my lifestyle. I'm going to change my habits. But until I sit down and plan out in detail how that's going to happen, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just going to be on that, that hamster wheel. Um, and, and do has a lot of components, um, um, you know, it, it, dreaming down the line and creating this, this future goal, but then mm-hmm. breaking it into small bite-sized pieces, um, not putting two, you know, you can only do one thing at a time rather than going, aw- going away and adding 12 more things you're going to do, just focus on one. You know, yeah. the dream is reached in tiny little steps not one giant leap. And again, it sounds so basic, but I tell you what, Paul, I hear people whining and complaining about the same thing they were two and three years ago, and they haven't done one single thing differently. And at some point, I, right. you know, I'm like, well, I just don't feel sorry for you because now this has become your problem. Maybe the problem was what, was what somebody else was doing to you all these years, but at some point you chose to stay. And so now mm-hmm. you have become the problem, not what this person is doing to you. Would you right. agree with that? I would totally agree with that. It, it goes back to what you opened with, Kelly, that you get clear about who you can change. And it's hard enough to change ourselves, right? Right. It's darn near impossible to change somebody else. So we put our focus where we have the most control. And get clear about where it is we're going. So, so see, believe, and do. Those all support and help each other, too, because as you begin to do, it helps your belief. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You start to see that, oh, yeah, I can and, do this, can I? And, and they're not always one after another. They all work in tandem. But I can right. often look back and see where I'm weak. Oh, mm-hmm. wait a minute. You're not getting this, you know, you know, because you didn't define it. That's why you're distracted. You're going off in a bunch of different directions. Mm-hmm. Stop and define this. You and know, it, anything as simple as a life goal to a goal that what you want your marriage to look like to a certain conversation with somebody that you need to have. Somebody right. came up to me once about difficult boss, blah, 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 and I said, you need to sit down and plan what you want out of that conversation. It doesn't and take all that long. Don't go in there and just long. react. Huh? And it doesn't take all that long, but it takes a little more effort than you think. Right. And less than you fear. And it takes stopping and not right. reacting, but thinking about how you're going to go into that situation. And and you know what, Paul? I, I, mm. I mess up just as much as the next person. I don't have it all together. Motivation Maybe more, speakers, Kelly. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're, they're motivational speakers, don't, I, there's not anybody who gets it right all the time. That's true. Kelly, before we turn you loose today, I want to make sure our listeners have a way to get in touch with you, because some of them might want to call you like that other fellow did. Sure, sure. Um, They can, let me give a couple of options. You can go to kellyswanson.net slash free stuff. Ah, and you'll see my workbook, When Fairy Tale Meets Reality, uh, Finding the Balance Between the Life You Envisioned and the Life You Got. It's free. Right. You can go onto YouTube. If you just Google Kelly Swanson, you'll, you'll find a bunch of videos. People we'll are so you. 
Um, and you've got those videos up on your website, too. I do, on kellyswanson.net. Right. And, and if you go there, you'll find out how to contact me. And my door is open. And call, send an email. I'm never given more than I can handle. Um, and if it's not me, find somebody near you. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask for help. It doesn't mean you're weak. It, it might just be the strongest thing you ever do. Probably means you're human. It does. Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, Swanson, S-W-A-N-S-O-N, dot net. A lot of resources there, folks. And Kelly is just as genuine as she sounds on this program. I've, oh, thank you. I, I've just appreciated my new friendship with you and all that you're doing to, to make this world a better place. Me so. too, and, and, and same goes to you, Paul. Thank you for joining us today at Live on Purpose Radio. Any brief parting thought? None of my thoughts are brief. <laughs> <laughs> but just stay on the funny side of life. You can get through anything if you can still hang on to your sense of humor. Don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us at Live on Purpose Radio. Everybody go out there and live on purpose. Purpose.